<laughs> We're counting down from 10 to 1, our favorite spots on this island. You don't got to drive up Cape Smoky to go see beautiful things. You just can see them right here in Glace Bay, Waterford, and Sydney. Cape Breton was voted one of the prettiest islands in the Maritimes, so that's something to be proud of. We're going to show you the best ways to enjoy Cape Breton Island on a fucking budget. Our number 10 spot is Spar Road in Whitney Pier. I love taking Spar Road because it's nice, slow, easy ride in the summertime. Roll your windows down, enjoy the breeze, breathe in the beautiful smell. Now the reason we picked Spar Road and the reason it's my personal favorite is that I get lost in Sydney quite easily. Now if I know if I can find the Spar Road, I'm going to be led right back to the Walmart, which is my first destination. <laughs> Only thing I'm doing in Sydney anyway. The reason I like driving on Spar Road is the speed limit, nobody drives over 50. No fucking lunatics on the road, racing around. It's a straight line, crack the window, light a cigarette, and it's a decent drive. Our number nine favorite place in Cape Breton is the Target Flea Market. Now I hate it when Target came into town, big American company, thinking they could steal all the business from all the locals. But now they turned it into a space that's better for entrepreneurs. Now Target was too expensive in the first place and it had way too fucking many security cameras. Sunday morning, I go see all my girls from Bingo, see what they're selling, if they got any Beanie Babies, and it's a great place to socialize. Now moving on to number eight. Jesus blessed the Whitney Pier with something very beautiful for the world to see. They have beautiful rolling hills that go right down. Loan all the kids into the car, go to Whitney Pier, say, watch this kids, we're gonna have a fucking ball. You pull down the hill, throw the car in neutral, and they fucking scream, it's a ball. Or if you're, uh, if you're feeling real adventurous in the summer, throw the rollerblades in the trunk. Fucking fly down the hill. I know Tracy's favorite part about the Whitney Pier hills. All roads lead to Tim Hortons. Number seven. Now this here is a beautiful recreational area for the town of New Waterford, the Bear Schwa. For those of you that don't know about this hidden gem, the Bear Schwa is a beautiful place in New Waterford. It used to be a boat launch back when everyone was fishermen. Now there's a lot you can do down there. If there's a hurricane, you'll see the whole fucking town going down there for the best view of the waves. Back in high school, I used to go down the Bear Schwa to scrap it. One of the, one of the earliest memories though that I got in Martina was down the Bear Schwa. Pucked each other's fucking heads up, but we've been right close ever since. Bearswa holds a very special place in my heart. That's where I lost my virginity. That's where I had my first beer. The reason that the Bearswa is near and dear to my heart is because it's so private. That's where I took most of my pregnancy tests growing up. And you just throw the pregnancy test off into the ocean when you're finished. Our number six must-see on Tracy and Martina's list of things to do in Cape Breton is the Jello Tree on Commercial Street in Glace Bay. You dudes got relatives from out of town? Tell them to tie their shoes together, throw them up in the tree. They'll be there forever. We don't know how they got there or what they're doing there, but it's the big fans over by the Lingan power plant. Don't get too close though, you might get clipped. I usually go there to think about things, go for a nice drive. If you want to feel like a speck of dust in the universe, go see the Lingan fans. Honest to God though, I wouldn't mind building a house right by the Lingan fans. That swoosh and the hum, that would put me right to sleep. Our number four spot is Myra. My favorite thing to do in Myra though is jump off Albert Bridge. Now it's a beautiful place to take your kids because there's lots of activities, okay? You gotta keep an eye on them, but if you don't feel like doing that, you feel like sending the kids off to do their own little thing, say, Go pretend you're a pirate. Go dig through the sand. See how many bottle caps you can collect. The kids watch themselves for the day. I'm a big fan of that. Now as they get older, you drive them out. You're going out yourself. You drop them off over by the bridge. Give them a pack of revs. Don't, don't matter, throw the money yours. And you can go over to the adult side. Now what I love about my regret also is that everyone smokes and drinks. It's a big fucking community. Number three is going to save you a lot of money. It's the Glace Bay Wharf. Saves you a trip to the wildlife park and it saves you a trip to the SPCA. Every weekend, Ma used to take me down, take me down the wharf, and she'd say, Here's a can of food, Tracy, and I'd open it up. 25 cats come running. And they're right gentle, too. They don't nip at you or scratch. The Glace Bay Wharf is just like a little petting zoo down there. You can feed all the animals down there. They got seagulls, they got cats, they got muskrats, don't matter. Bring a loaf of bread, you're gonna be tracking them all. And here's the thing they're charging money in at the SPCA. That's a fucking scam. You go down to the Glace Bay Wharf, you can take whatever cat you want. Nobody's going to say nothing to you. Nobody's going to ask you if you're a good homeowner or whatever like that, okay? 
Number three is also a great place if you just had a fight with the wife and you want to go clear your mind, go park down the wharf and grab yourself a double-double and some chips. You just cool off and go back home to whatever you came from. Now our countdown's winding down here. This here's our number two favorite spot. Sydney nightlife. All the clubs and bars in downtown Sydney. There's so much to do and I just love the atmosphere. They haven't changed the music since about 2003, which is perfect. Nobody likes new music. And what I especially like is you can wear the highest heels in the world and you won't roll your ankle because your foot sticks to the floor. And every time you go into any of the washrooms, there's always a good fucking fight going on between two of the girls. And if you do go to the bathroom, not just to fight, make sure you bring your own toilet paper because sometimes they forget to put it in there. They're too busy doing other things. Our number one best destination in Cape Breton is the Holy Wall. The Tim Hortons Holy Wall in Bordeaux. In 1998, the Lord Savior Jesus Christ appeared on the wall of Tim Hortons in Bordeaux. I remember going up as a kid, Ma took me up, and she said, Tracy, genuflect on the, st on the step there. So what Jesus did, he came to us, the coffee drinkers. Now I'm just realizing, we got a little bit ahead of ourselves. Some of you are probably like, what the fuck is talking about Jesus Christ on the wall of Tim Hortons? So back in, what, 1998, I don't know what happened, maybe some dead moths up in the lights or whatever, cast Jesus' shadow onto the brick wall of Tim, Tim Hortons. Now that's worth the drive. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. I hope you feel really educated about the amazing things you can do and see in Cape Breton. It's not just about the Cabot Trail and all the trees they got going on up there. It sure is not, Martina. So if you learned a thing or two, like this video, comment some of your favorite places and things to do in Cape Breton, and uh, we'll get back to you. Like it too, or whatever the fuck you do. Bye, Bye Sanxies! Sanxies.